All right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna keep playing this? All right. <clears throat> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to All Gen Gamers episode 79. I'm one of your hosts, John Games Trady One, and I'm here with Jason Heine. He's kind of under the weather. Jason, how you feeling, buddy? What's up, guys? Sorry, yeah, a little under the weather. Have my halls cough drops, but hey, I'm here. I would not want to be anywhere else. <laughs> We've got Johnny Millennium. Doctor Love is in the building. Doctor Love, Thank what's going on? Not much, Jason. Uh, I hope you can make it through the podcast. You still have an announcer's voice, even though you're very sick. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate you appreciate it. <laughs> then can I do this in a world? <laughs> a world at a time far away. We are here also with Pete Dor. Pete, how's it going, man? Pretty good. And we are joined by our special guest this week. That is Austin, known as Peanut Butter Gamer, and also uh, runs the website normalboots.com. What's going on, Austin? Hey, how's it going? Doing pretty well. So, Austin, kind of tell us a little about yourself and what games you're into. And I know Johnny's about to ask you any second now what your favorite game is. So, I'm asking, <laughs> what's your favorite game? <laughs> it's no, no, it's become a weird tradition on the podcast. I'm always asking uh, our guests what their favorite video game of all time is. I didn't know if we were going to start with that. I, thanks for reminding me, actually. I would have forgotten. <laughs> but, Austin, what is your favorite video game of all time? It's kind of an easy question, really. Uh, I mean, my opinions change depending on what day it is, but pretty much the only. Thing that stays the same is I Majora's Mask N64 has always been my favorite game. Now, hey, okay, do you know this is a good thing to open up is that for me, I never enjoyed Majora's Mask and I always aspired to like it. What, what, what was I doing wrong? Uh, yeah, it's weird because some people love Majora's Mask and some people think, well, it's not that great. I personally. The thing I hear people complain the most about it is they don't like the three-day time limit. I love the three-day time limit, personally, because I like to go through each each day. You know, each day, things happen at each specific time, and you can go back, and it's fun for me to see, like, how, how different events are affected by what you do over the, over the course of each day. It's one of my favorite things about it, personally, but a lot of people complain about that. Just like a lot of people complain about Wind Waker sailing around in the boat, and I actually rather like that. I, lo- I love sailing around in the boat, too. Yeah. yeah, me too. I always like that as well. But, like, what did I... Okay, besides... The, okay, what did I miss out gameplay-wise? Because I remember I went and bought it from my local EB. I remember I bought it used, and I brought it home, I put it in, and I was just like, man, I just... I can't get into this and I was like I was, I've always been pissed off especially when people like yourself are like oh it's so damn good I'm like man I feel like I missed out <laughs> you know totally well for me Zelda games I mean you know you always have your uh, dungeons and stuff like that but it's always been for me more about the feel of the game and the, and the side quests like the fun extra stuff to do that's what really sets one Zelda game apart for me than to another and I felt like Majora's Mask had some of the best side quests, and I really enjoyed the mask collecting in that game. is one of my favorite things to do. Hmm. Pete, Pete, did you ever play Majora's Mask? Oh, yeah. I was one of the ones that did not care for it either because of the three-day time limit, like you said. And I didn't like... I, I really didn't like the core gameplay mechanic of the masks. Like, I couldn't get into that. I kind of just wanted to keep it all bare bones, like Link, Sword, and Shield. I didn't want to be transforming. I didn't like using just the other regular masks. And I didn't like, you know, the time limit and the time change. I just, I couldn't get into it. Yeah. It's funny because I, I, I never really was a big fan of uh, turning into a wolf in Twilight Princess, but I always liked it in Majora's Mask. So I don't know if I'm just hypocritical or just they're different games, I guess. Uh, it's hmm. funny because it, this, this is an old argument. Actually, because I put up a, a you know cool Zelda stuff, we went down to Brian's place uh, to his store game deals, and he was showing off his Zelda collection. And he made a comment. He said, "Oh, Twilight Princess is my favorite Zelda game," and you know it's just kind of a, you know, it's not a, it's, it's his opinion type of thing. And then, then we got to a section, and he's like, "Oh, Majora's Mask, I didn't like that too much," and I didn't say anything about it at the time. I was like, "Yeah, I don't like it too much either." <laughs> And then there were so many comments from people going, but Majora's, well, how could you say Twilight Prince is your favorite? You know, Majora's Mask is my favorite. Everybody has different opinions, you know what I mean? Yeah, like some people play crazy. different games at different times, right? Yeah. yeah I, I, did, I did a top 10 Zelda games list, and I mean, I expected some controversy and stuff like that, but it, man, it, the comments that I got were crazy. It's like, everybody has a different opinion about which Zelda game is the best. Which and one like, do you have first, Majora's Mask? Yeah, Majora's Mask, as I, I've got first. And, uh, like, I was surprised. I Personally, I've never been a, the biggest fan of Twilight Princess. I mean, I liked the game, but yeah. I, I actually put that at number 10, because it's, it's just not my favorite. It's a great game. But uh, yeah. I was surprised just how many people 
were so upset about that. I was I was expecting people to be more upset that I didn't put uh, you know like link to the past or something like that up that high. I mean, I think I put that like six or or something like that. Actually, no, that was eight. I was expecting people to be upset with that one because I, I'm admittedly more of an N64 kid than I was an SNES kid. But no, everybody was mad that I put Twilight Princess at number 10. It's crazy oh. how people's opinions for Zelda games are just completely different. And part of it, I think, depends on when you were born, like how old you are, what yeah. games you were playing when you were a kid, as opposed to which games you're playing to. Yeah, that, playing that, that plays a huge role, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you know, I think it gets, I think Majora Mask actually gets overshadowed by Ukraine, Ukraine of Time. You know, yeah, I'm trying to bring it back. I'm doing my best to bring Majora's Mask back up yeah. to the top. <laughs> yeah. my, my my personal favorite though is is got to be link uh, link to the past is my personal favorite. Yeah. But like you said, everyone everyone has their own different top ten list. So who would yeah. you say one's better than the other? That's my personal opinion. Absolutely. Though, so. yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's Majora's funny, Mask like uh, Majora's Mask is the only Zelda game out of the ones that I've played that I've only played once. I just most of the Zelda games I played through or started a new game at least two times, and that one I played when it came out, and I'm really looking forward to. I mean, it's inevitable that Nintendo's probably going to re-release it on the 3DS. So I'm looking yeah, forward so. to trying it again because it's been so long since I've played it. Maybe I'll change my opinion on it. Yeah, maybe me too. Yeah, give it another go. Uh, Austin, have you played Skyward Sword yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually a really big fan of Skyward Sword. Uh, it's weird because I didn't like Twilight Princess quite as much, so I wasn't really sure if I would like Skyward Sword a lot, but I ended up rather enjoying it. And uh, my friend... Uh, I mean, you guys may know who he is. My friend John, John from JonTron. He right. he hates the game, and, and so we're always arguing. You know, like this is just me and him in Skype. Every single time we bring up Skyward Sword, we're always arguing about it. So it's kind of funny, but I'm I'm a big fan of Skyward Sword. Yeah, yeah. Not Pete's, as much as Max, but I do I do like the game. Yeah, Pete needs to play. Uh, yeah, that I think. Hey, eh? Pete. Yeah, when I you know have some time. <laughs> <laughs> Take some, you know, five hour energy to get me through the the ten hour supposed of bore fest at the start of the game. Yeah. It's actually, it's, 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 a little slow, but I, I feel like the yeah. characterization of the of the of like Zelda and Link really really made it bearable. The slow start for me, but. Was a bit slow, wasn't it? You know, you know. I take back my my uh, my top Zelda game. I think my favorite one is probably Link: The Faces of Evil for the the CDI. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never played that. I always wanted to, but I oh, never it's so guessed. terrible! But it's so great. If you're a Zelda fan, you owe it to yourself to at least try it once. Uh, the the voice work in that is just absolutely horrible. Yeah, I haven't seen enough of that on the internet. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, you, but interesting enough, the Zelda, there's three Zelda games for the uh, CDI. Zelda's Adventure, which is later on release, was the last one released, is the the more uh, like rare of the three, and it's actually more, I guess, more like Zelda ish, so mm-hmm. to speak. So it's like a top down. Uh, Pete, I don't know if you've ever played it or not. I've watched. It. Yeah, I've watched a lot of videos on it, and Half Blind Gamer was doing a, a playthrough of that a while ago, I think. Yeah. And that game does look kind of interesting to me. Um, the only problem is though, ever since the Angry Video Game Nerd did a review on that, the price of that game is like doubled. You know, you right. you can't get a copy of that game for less than one hundred and fifty. Yeah. Uh, go figure. So. And also, yeah, as, as you say, we're getting older now. So a lot of those games are just, you know, getting more expensive anyways. Like, all those, I still can't get over all those sealed Super Nintendo games you were talking about. Like, Demon's oh, yeah. Best selling for 500 bucks? I, I'll never uh, forget yeah. that. Five, or was it five or 600 and Sparkster on Super Nintendo? $700? I mean, Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people with a lot of money oh, wait. there. <laughs> oh, this is the one that I'm really interested to see how much this goes for. Ready for this one? Hold on. Let me bring up the exact auction here. It's a signed game. Um, by the time people hear the other two Whoa. for the Super oh, Famicom, it, hold that on. Totally cut, that totally cut out. Yeah, there. You cut out there. Say that again. Okay, it's a it's a signed copy of Mother One Plus Two, signed by the creator of Earthbound. Oh my, oh god. my god! How much did you say it was going for? It's currently up to five hundred and ten dollars with thirty two bids, with three uh, four days left to go. Oh. Four days? Oh, yep. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Johnny's going to look look at him. <laughs> just typing away. I, I, have, yeah. to see, I have to see this. Clippity clop clop. clop just, fucking horse hooves over there. Do, you, like, for, if you're paying that much for a game, I'd want to get it like, like make sure it's authentic signature and proof that's been signed. It is because this auction has a, a picture of, it's from an event in Japan from 2003 okay. yeah. where he was doing signings and it has a picture of him signing it. 
because you got to be very careful, especially buying stuff on eBay, signatures on eBay. You got to be very care- careful of counterfeits and yeah, you, yeah. Know, you know, for sure. But that's just Earthbound fans are going batshit insane right now. Mm-hmm. They're pissing their pants because this is like the holy grail. I mean, yeah. if an Earthbound fucking okay, an Earthbound <laughs> wooden ruler. It's it was a wooden ruler, regular old school wooden ruler, with a stamp of the Earthbound logo on there. About maybe year and a half, two years ago, sold for like seven hundred dollars. No, better bet your damn self that this thing is going to sell for a lot. Hey Pete, but here's <laughs> here's the deal about the ruler. You know, all it does is just measure how popular the game is. He is so punny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was stupid. All right. <laughs> This podcast was created by retro video game collectors and YouTube show hosts Pete Dorr, Happy Console Gamer, Gamester81, and myself, Jason Heine. Make sure to follow along and subscribe to us on iTunes under the podcast section, All Gen Gamers. And if you want more information about this podcast, please visit www.allgengamers.com.